Today's video, we're gonna look at a few options to speed up your programming within Mastercam, as well as some things that you can do external to Mastercam that can speed up your workflow as well. So getting started with this video, up on screen you might notice this is in fact one of our new 5-axis lessons. And if you do follow us over on either Instagram or Facebook, you may have seen some postings about this file recently. Uh, so just know that it is in fact ready to go now and it will be up on the course site shortly. So what I want to talk about today in Mastercam is speeding up the overall workflow within Mastercam. And the easiest way to do that and the most overlooked way to do that is to start using your other hand a little more often. There's your other hand. So in Mastercam, typically we've got our hand on our mouse and we move the mouse around and click on buttons of whatever it is we want to uh, perform. Uh, so your left hand is basically, for the most part, sitting there doing nothing. And this is where we can start using that hand to speed things up. And specifically, we're going to do that with keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to bring up the search menu option here for keyboard shortcuts. And Mastercam has a default set of shortcuts already defined. So just an example of how these will work. I'm going to look at switching to the top view. It's currently in my file here, I'm an isometric. If I want to go to the top, I've got two options. I can do my right click and come over here and click top. Or I can go to my view tab and click on top here. So either way, I'm going to right click and then locate the button or up here. I might be on a different tab. I got to come over here to view and over here to top. So either way, it's not an overly quick command versus using my keyboard shortcut, just simply using my left hand. I could be anywhere in the screen, alt, and then number one, and you're in a top view. So we'll do the flip here and get back to an isometric view, which from our chart we can see is alt and then number seven. So alt and seven, and we're back in isometric. Now the thing with keyboard shortcuts, getting all these into memory might take some time. So what you'll probably find is you're just going to memorize a handful of these that you use most often. And then it might even come down to you creating your own keyboard shortcuts depending on what things you do most commonly. I'm going to right click up here in the menu and click on customize ribbon. And within here down at the bottom we've got our keyboard shortcuts and we can actually customize those. So from in here we can access the predefined shortcuts and alter them. Or we can find completely new functions. Let's say perhaps we use the dynamic milling toolpath quite a bit. We can come over and find dynamic mill. And we can insert here a new keyboard shortcut for that. So I'm going to go Alt, Shift, and D. Once we've defined this keyboard shortcut we want to use for this, this function, we're going to click on Assign and Close. So typical workflow for getting to the dynamic mill toolpath in this part would be to go to Toolpaths, over here to dynamic and away you go. With this new keyboard shortcut, we can be on any tab. We can be anywhere in space and use my shortcut of Alt Shift D and it launches into the dynamic mill interface. So that is probably our most powerful option within the Mastercam software of speeding things up. That's by the use of keyboard shortcuts. Now let's look outside of Mastercam and what can we do to speed things up there? So my first recommendation here, we're not affiliated with this company at all. I just think it's a really great product. And if you're doing any sort of CAD CAM work and you're doing a lot of it, I would suggest trying one of these out. And these are the 3D Connection 3D Mice. So this is, again, this is a product that you're gonna be using with your left hand, most likely. You basically have the ability to grab and control your model with this ball or disc, we'll call it here. This little knob, I guess is the best way to describe this thing. So with that, I'll show you the difference between panning and zooming using this device versus using your normal scroll wheel and mouse. So on screen, I'm going to use my mouse only to zoom in. I have to use my middle mouse wheel and zoom out. And notice, depending on where my cursor is, the zoom in and zoom out will behave slightly different. And then to pan and rotate, I have to click my middle mouse wheel down and then I can move and I get a, I get a pivot. So if I'm trying to get into this crevice here to, to have a good look at the feature, it can be a little cumbersome to get in there and pivot and zoom and pivot and zoom. Obviously doable, but again, so let's now use the 3D mouse. So I'm not using the scroll wheel anymore. This is just 3D mouse movement. So you can see here it's, it's almost 
more like I'm, I'm manipulating the model directly by holding onto it and zooming in. So you can get a very smooth motion into the, into the area you're looking for. Same with zooming out. It's very helpful when clicking on surfaces, you're able to pivot the model. Instead of having to, to zoom and rotate and then move your mouse back and click, you can just simply pivot, rotate, and very fluid motion with the 3D mice. So back to the options in here, there's a bunch of different 3D mice you can buy. Um, there's these smaller ones, which obviously are, are cheaper. They're obviously much more portable. I do prefer the style with the, with the bed here. It's a little more ergonomic. It gives your wrist somewhere to rest. Uh, the only difference between these two is one's wireless, one's not. And this guy over here has got a fancy screen and a bunch more buttons. So on the topic of extra peripheral devices, my last recommendation, in this video at least, is going to be not the additional mouse in your left hand with the space mouse, but the actual mouse you're using in your right hand. So a lot of users will be using some sort of business mouse, maybe one of the uh, MX mice from Logitech. But this is where I find gaming mice are extremely useful. Uh, and not just your, your run-of-the-mill average gaming mice, but one that have the extra buttons, uh, they're referred to as MMO gaming mice. There's a whole bunch of buttons on the sides of these mice. So these, these buttons can be programmed to be basically anything. And let's just uh, switch over here to my actual mouse software. So over here in these buttons, I can come over to a button, pick it, and assign some sort of command to it. So this could be a, a single keystroke, the number one, the number two, the number seven, whatever. It can be multi-keys. So this is where you can get into your keyboard shortcuts. If there's multiple functions that you want to happen at one time, you can program them all in here. Uh, maybe you repeatedly type in the same text over and over again. You can program that, that text, that sentence, whatever it is, into here, and that can be executed by clicking a button on this mouse. So as a demonstration, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to bring back our keyboard shortcut list for a minute. And what I want to do here is I'm going to pretend that I've gotten this part all finished up. And at the very end, what I always do is I go into an isometric view, and then I'm going to do a fit screen. And then finally, I'm going to turn off all of my tool paths, which is down here. So I'm going to do an Alt and then 7 to isometric. Then I'm going to do an Alt F1 to get all my geometry to fit on the screen. And then I'm going to do an Alt and T to turn all my tool paths off. So how that's going to look, I'll first come up into my command editor and give this a name. So I'll just call this finish up. So what we'll do next is record our keystrokes. So I'm going to come down here, click Start Recording. So our isometric view is Alt and then 7. And then our fit screen was Alt and F1. And finally, to turn off our tool paths is Alt and T. So that's all finished up. I've got my three commands stored in there. I'll click OK. That's now stored in my button there in the very lower left-hand corner. So back in our part here, we've got all of our tool paths turned on. We're in some sort of random position where we just finished programming. And now I want to get into my finished state. So I'm going to click that one button on my mouse. It goes isometric, fits the part on the screen, turns the tool paths off. So there are other more basic mice that have programmable keys. Basically any mouse that has some sort of programmable button can be used for this type of uh, workflow. It doesn't have to be the mouse I just showed there. Even some of your business mice have a few buttons that can be programmed. But I find the gaming mice, especially when you're getting into multiple saved functions, uh, they're the best for the application. There's also keyboards you can buy which have programmable macro buttons on them as well. I just find those are a little bit more expensive and the macro mice are, are a much more budget-friendly option. Now, there are many other things you can do to speed up your programming in MASHCAM. If you'd like to share some of yours, please comment on this video. And perhaps we can do a part two on other things that we discover uh, to help make everyone's workflow a little bit quicker.